Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Brother Hobby 1504.5, 4050 and 5700 kV motors. In this video I'm going to test these motors using my motor thrust end and then assemble the 5700 kV motors on a new 4 inch build and head outdoors and test them out. First of all, in terms of packaging, along with each motor you're getting 6 1.5mm hex screws, 4 shorter ones for securing the motors to a 3 to 4mm thick bottom plate and two longer ones for securing the propellers. In terms of specs, the weight of the Brother Hobby 1504.5 motor is 12 grams, including the full length of the 15 cm long 24 gauge silicone motor wires. It is using an 8 by 8 mm mounting pattern. The motor bell is secured using a C-clip, and here you can see what it looks like after removing it. The motor bell is using 14 magnets, which is something that you should keep in mind in case you are going to enable Betaflight's RPM filter. And the height of the stator is 4.5 mm and its diameter is 15 mm. In addition, without limiting the motor's output power, which is something that I'm going to address in a minute, the 4050 kV version is designed to handle up to 4 inch propellers using 4S batteries, and the 5700 kV motors are designed to handle up to 4 inch propellers using 3S batteries and 3 inch propellers using 4S batteries. The next thing that I've done is to bench test these motors using my motor thrust stand using 3 and 4S batteries and using different types and sizes of propellers. And unfortunately, or maybe actually fortunately, because I'm glad I found about this issue, I discovered that the measured current readings of my motor's thrust stand were significantly lower than the ones that were included in the datasheet that was supplied to me by Brother Hobby. In order to confirm this issue, I used the toolkit of C-Watt meter when thrust testing the 5700 kV version, and I can confirm that indeed my thrust stand is faulty, and that's the reason I'm going to retire my current thrust stand and get a new and more reliable one from RC Benchmark, which hopefully is going to arrive soon, and I'm going to review on an upcoming video. As for this lightweight build, which I've put together in order to test these motors, in addition to the Brother Hobby 1504.5 5700 kV motors, I'm using the Twig Mutant 4 inch button plate, the Beta FPV F4V3 all in one flight controller, the Flywheel Goku 625 video transmitter, the Foxir Micro Lollipop antenna, which is nicely placed inside this custom 3D printed canopy which was kindly printed for me by a friend of mine, the Runcam Racer Nano FPV camera, and the TBS Crossfire Nano receiver and the Nimotel antenna, and yes, I'm aware that this way of mounting the antenna is going to reduce the range, but anyway, I'm not going to get too far with this quadcopter. The weight of this build is 117.9 grams, the oil-up weight, including a 3S 850mAh battery, is about 194 grams, and including a 4S 650mAh battery, which is the one that I recommend to use with this setup, is about 193 grams. This setup, which weighs way below the 250 grams restriction, which applies to some countries, is going to provide you with about 4 minutes of a fast-paced flight. You should note that if you are going to use a similar setup, you must limit the motor's output using beta flight as otherwise you risk burning the motors and also damaging the flight controller, in case you are going to use the one with an integrated 4-in-1 ESC that can't handle a continuous current per motor of about 25 amperes. Now since the motor's output limit value is different when using 3S and 4S batteries, what you can do either using the CLI or using the user interface in case you are using Betaflight 4.2 is to define the scale factor and the number of cell count under different profiles, and in addition, you have to make sure under power and battery that the maximum voltage per cell is set to 4.4 volts. Then Betaflight is going to automatically select the PID profile based on the number of cells of the battery that is going to be plugged. So overall, after testing out these motors, I can tell you that these are definitely powerful motors for this type of build, and another thing that I noticed is that they get cool very fast. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage and of course the thrust test results, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.